The S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, we got to keep it really short, sweet to the point. So today we had some big action happening, we had some very big news regarding banks and the overall rating of said banks. And we had a little bit of a threat kind of coming against our United States market and economy that we also have to talk about tomorrow. We have some big news coming out of the gate. Fed minutes. I'm going to give you my expectations and really simplify that for you as quickly as possible. Now you're wondering, Tyler, why, why are you not in the, the command center today? Well, as you can tell, I'm wearing the same shirt from a few days ago. I've been down here grinding, right? I've been grinding said uh, all my life, dare I say. And when I look at this market, I'm telling you right now, I think you got to be locked in. And I'm telling you right now, this is the time that people lose money in the market. This is a prime example of said time. I'm going to explain to you how to keep winning in this market and where I see us going into this market for the end of the week and into next week, which again, Jackson Hole, the really the judgment day of the market for at least the next month or so until we go into the next Fed meeting and get some more data. Let's get to it. Two little life update. I don't know if you guys care about me whatsoever, but personally, just put an offer down on a house for a potential remodel for me and Allie. Um, pretty cool news. Definitely excited about that. Um, keep you guys updated. Might be a little bit of a real like investment type property type thing we got going on, or we might end up staying there after we remodel it. So it's kind of been like up in the air, but pretty cool. Good news. Um, and on top of that, it's, uh, you know, for sale by owner. So we get kind of get to adjust our rate for ourselves. It's a win-win, right? Good news. Good news. But it isn't all glum. Now, when we look at the market today, let's talk about the big boy. Fitch warns it may be forced. It's like, hey, just letting you know, guys, <laughs> JP Morgan, we we know you pay our bills, but we might have to downgrade you here pretty soon, right? They're talking about JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman, and all these other ones, right? That's what they're talking about. They're saying we might have to downgrade you. If that happened, um, it would be bad. We haven't seen downgrades on banks, big boy banks, in a long time. So that's definitely worth mentioning. Okay, number one. Now, Fed minutes into tomorrow. I'm going to keep this really short, sweet to the point. Fed minutes are basically just like reading like a previous game that happened. It's like if I recorded the Super Bowl and I put it on TiVo and I watched it like later on, but I already knew what happened in the Super Bowl. That's it. The end. It's the same thing. So you might get a little bit of upside into Fed minutes, uh, but I don't think it's something that's going to hold you up. Um, yeah, I'm going to tell you that right now. The next week or so is going to be what dictates the market. When we get PCE at the end of the month, we also have NVIDIA earnings next week, and then we also have uh, Jackson Hole. That's going to be big. We haven't really heard from any Fed members. We saw Kashikari today talking about the home market may have, may have bottomed. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, if we continue to raise rates and we continue to hold rates at these levels at least until the middle of next year, um, the, the home market has not bottomed because the only thing that's pushing the market down is interest rates continually going up and staying high. That's why the home market's in the situation that it is. So a home market cannot be bottomed out or it cannot turn into a bullish home market and people start buying homes again until rates start to drop. I think we all understand that though. So ignore some of the nonsense online. Now, when we zoom out here, we zoom out, right? Uh, we look at a few big levels. Now, ES, a little bit all over the place. NASDAQ, I always tell you guys, why do we like, why, Tyler, why do you like the NASDAQ? It's because I look at it like 24 seven. I literally make sweet love to my fiance. And then when I'm done, I immediately pull up my iPhone to look at what the NASDAQ is doing. I kid you not ask her. She, there's no cap included, right? So when we look here, we go to the two hour. What did we talk about yesterday? Go watch yesterday's video if you need to. This was a low 15.3. Five. I told you guys on replay. It's like ESPN top plays, except I'm your host, Tyler Wilson, not Van Pelt or whatever the hell his name is, right? Perfect touch last night around midnight into basically 3 a.m. And he started coming down. We had a little seesaw of a day, but ultimately still pushing down. You can also see that downward channel we're still operating in. Perfect. It is all synergized together, right? Just played out really well. Now we're getting a little bit of bounce here in the after hours. Again, you know, same. We're just trending. I'm going to tell you guys over and over again right now, if you want to make money in this market, stop going long at the top of the channel. Stop going short at the bottom. Okay. On top of that, I have a, a little bit of a tip I want to tell you. Okay. I told people in discord earlier, um, but basically what I told them at the end of the day, I was like, look, 
and, and I have people like in Discord that just, they're going they're going free willy on me. I'm like, guys, y'all need to stop. You need to put the, push the brakes on trading, right? Have two or three names that you want to trade. Like, let's say hypothetically, we're looking at the market. For me, it's been Apple. A little bit watching what's happening with Apple, but the main stock I'm trading is Meta because I know how it's moving, right? So giving you a little bit of a visual. So I went to Meta and I've just traded the same thing all week. Jay's only traded Nvidia. I've really only traded Meta. I like Microsoft, but it didn't get the action I wanted. So I've just been trading Meta. And so what we're looking for, and this was yesterday, right? Yesterday, 1 p.m. Meta looking to reject a 304. Biggest problem is action on ES. If it gets back under 4495, that's what we're looking for, right? So today, you got back to that level, triple top, pushing down one, and then you made it down to like 299, give or take, working back towards 298. So I just been trading the same thing. Now, why am I trading one thing? Why have I limited what I'm doing? Because the market is acting sporadic. It's irrational right now. What, what, is it, what do I mean by that? We have NASDAQ clearly getting pummeled, pushing down. You go to ES, um, it's a lot of back and forth. Specifically, what the hell was this? What? what? Come on, fix yourself, Trend Spider. Uh, right, this is your main level, 44.95. Wicks under, wicks under, back above, wicks under, back above, get back down, right? It's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you know, this level stems, what we already know where it is. We talked about it for like almost a week and a half now. It's your previous 52 week highs before you pushed into 4,600, right? It's a major level, right? We understand that. But you're just seesawing back and forth. This isn't a clear trend of like we, what we had back here where we we're just moving up. You've started to potentially get into the area. You get back below like 43.50, you've made a lower low, right? And the short term, you're making lower highs and lower lows, right? You haven't broken long-term structure, but you're not in a great position to, to win here. Now, before we go any further, I have to tell you to consider doing two things, like and subscribe, right? It helps out the channel, guys. Every single day here on the channel, I make videos, I make content, keeping you up to date. I make short form content now. I, I literally have no life. All I do is make content and talk in Discord. And like I said, think about the NASDAQ. That's my life. So I, again, helps out. I appreciate the love and support. Also too, the Discord link is down below if you're interested. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is not gonna tell you buy, sell, you're gonna get rich tomorrow. This is teaching you the steps. This is teaching you the process. This is taking you from point A, hopefully to C, right? Navigating you through that area, understanding how to trade, why to trade, why to be in the market, why not to be in the market, right? That's what I try to do, and that's what me and Jay try to do here. We cannot control if you're going to just take stupid trades. I can't control that. You're in charge of your portfolio at the end of the day. But again, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll try to hold your hand along the way. Again, Discord may be for you. If it's not, we have free education. Go over here, hover over home, go to education. We teach everything for free. We don't even sell a course. Now, going back into ES, I got to roll up the sleeves, okay? I, we need to understand too, right? And I can only say this so many times. I can only say the same thing so many times. It's just the truth. This is a weekly demand, not, not an hourly not two hour, not four, not even the day. Weekly, massive, massive level. Massive, massive support. Going all the way down to basically 4350, 4380 roughly, right? So understand, we're not just going to drop straight through this. We're, it's just not going to happen. It's not. Like Nick Saban said, you're not going to get me to say it, okay? Right? So understand that. Now, we go to NQ. Very similar type thing happening here. Again, very clear, right? There, there's nothing, there's nothing like hard to read about this, right? You based here, you pushed up higher, right? You're getting, you're getting dangerous. You get below 14.8 and highway to the danger zone. But in all seriousness, I'm telling you, you get below that, then we're, we're in the area of danger. So again, let's talk about what we're expecting, what to be looking forward to and kind of how to navigate this market. One. If you're looking to be scalping, you're looking to be day trading right now. It's one of the worst or hardest times to be doing this, right? When it comes to how I trade, how I try to push or teach people how to trade, it's primarily based on putting myself in the easiest and best circumstance at all times. But I can acknowledge right now, trading in general, this is a bad time to be trading. You have so much decision coming up in the next few days. Again, Jackson Hole... Like last year, it threw, I think it was like almost 4% move on NASDAQ and ES. It's just like pummeled, right? It was, just, it was terrible, terrible, okay? 
So we need to understand that. Going into next week as well, NVIDIA earnings. We saw what that did to the market, right? Three, we have no Fed members speaking besides Kosh Cardi did, but like no one else is speaking about what happened with PPI, Fitch ratings on banks. No one else is talking. Where are they at, right? So we have all three of these things that are just lining up. On top of that, we got the dollar trying to break out. We got oil sitting at massive levels. So it's not even me turning into a massive bear. It's me just saying, understand where you got to be cautious, conservative, and understand where you got to be aggressive and take advantage of the situation sitting in front of you. There's two scenarios. And sometimes you get in that middle ground, but you're not there, obviously. We're not in the middle ground. We have a lot coming up. We just had our first bad data come out there, right? Understand, that's the reality of the situation. That's where we're sitting right now. So I'm going to tell you now, patience is going to pay off immensely, okay? You, you have your levels marked. If you got the newsletter, you know all the levels as well. I'll have you updated on Twitter also later tonight and on the option drops handle. So make sure you're paying attention and make sure, again, understand you're going to have another nasty breakout to the up or to the downside. It's going to happen. I promise. It's the stock market. It will do it. It's, it's done it for the last 100 years. It'll do it again. Okay? Understand that. Having, four, let's say, having $40,000 in capital just doing nothing with it is better than putting yourself in a bad situation, a less probability of succeeding than waiting for the situation to get a breakout and trade good price action with that $40,000. I'd rather have 40,000 than risk going to 45, right? In a really bad circumstance and having a high probability of dropping it down to 30, 25. They're just taking bad, bad trades. I've seen it guys. I see it time and time. I see it all day, every day. I see traders nonstop, right? I gotta trade, I gotta trade. You don't got to trade. The name of the game, I keep saying it, is survival. Survive the market, people. That's your number one priority and goal. It's not to just have winners. It's not to be a millionaire. It's not to, to flex on all your friends that are in college or wherever you're doing, right? It's survival. If you survive in this game, you will win. That's the name of it, right? People come and go. They lose all the time. You have big wins. You have big losses. But the people who survive are the ones who thrive and win and continue to stay per market cycle. Survive, survive, survive. That's got to be your mentality. You'll have the big wins. But if you learn to survive and not accept and not put yourself in circumstances to have the big losses, it changes the game. The last thing we're going to talk about, the DXY and some of the other things. DXY, again, I've been talking about it. I've been, been trying to warn you guys what's happening here. Descending triangle, false breakdown, Bull stepped in, pushing you up. The DXY, nasty daily candle. This thing is gross, right? They tried to push you down. Buyers pushed you right back up, right? You're sitting at resistance, but you get above 103.6. You can, you can start moving, start doing some damage. We look at crude. What's happening here with oil? You saw some downside. You pushed down to 81 right now, okay? We, we got to see. Like, are you going to follow the market? Because chances are, look, if the market pushes down, we get it like a stall and drop. Chances are crude drops with it even with OPEX doing what it's doing, okay? Which would be best for CPI and data going forward, right? Until OPEC gets everything handled. But if crude starts to bounce without the market, I'm very dangerous, very, very dangerous. It could put us in um, like, you know, just like stair-stepping down and down and down. If crude cannot get situated and start pushing back down. But again, uh, something worth watching. And also too, I totally suspect crude to hurt CPI in the upcoming readings. Um, into next into next month, September. Um, maybe PCE, but I, I don't have an answer on that right now. Also going to yields, we look what's happening here. Uh, the two-year, you hit 5%. I believe it was yesterday. You came back down. You're pushing back up. Still look good. Uh, Five-year, pushing up. Looks great. Ten-year, pushing up. Looks like it wants to go up. 30-year, they're all going up, right? Your inversion's near 98%. Not ideal. Okay, that's what you got to... It, it's not pretty. Okay, so we look at DXY, ugly. We look at yields, ugly. We look at oil, eh, you're getting a little bit of selling, thank God, but you're dropping with the market, so it makes kind of some sense. But I will say, we look at crude, you're dropping. Don't get me wrong here on the daily, and it doesn't look great. It looks like you're getting rejected. But, I mean, you're not dropping as much as the NASDAQ, right? We're having that inverted effect here. So those are things you need to be looking at. 
That's my take on the market. That's what I'm looking at. If you have questions, comment down below. Favorite names I'm trading towards downside. Let me give it to you straight real quick. Meta, it's been my baby boy. I've been loving this one. Under 304, I'm slapping it, right? I've just been slapping it over and over. It's been straight money. One, two, we have had so many opportunities there. Uh, Microsoft here on the daily. We talked about this in Discord quite a bit. On like the four hour, you're kind of forming a bear flag. So what you had is you broke down out of this level, you bounced into it and you might be pushing back down. Um, this is what you're looking at right here. It was your previous support right about there. You're bouncing back into it. If you get re rejected and you really, if you hold below like 320, uh, I can see it's dropping and filling the gap near like 316, 315. That's what I'd be looking at there. Uh, next up as well, a, I don't want to mention any semiconductors. Um, Apple, uh, Apple, dear sweet Lord, baby Jesus. So I want to consider this a descending triangle, but it's, it's like hard to cons. I guess it is. Because you're making lower highs. It looks bad. 177, really big support. You lose 177, and I think SPY and ES go tumbling as well. So, heavily watching what's happening on Apple. Amazon's been holding up really well. You get back below 136. Not ideal. Gap down to like 130. So, eh, not, not good either. You're kind of seeing a kind of going trend happening there right now. Uh, also, too, Tesla might break 232. If that happens, that's pretty disgusting. You have you could argue your levels at 220, but, I mean, I'm really going to be looking towards 218 next. That's my levels. That's what I'm watching. Have a good one. See you tomorrow. Be safe. Don't trade like an idiot. Please, just, just don't. Think about your family, right? Think, think about little Tay.